Hi, welcome to Atmos First, uh, a guide to the science and art of aging healthfully. This is the companion website to the book. Though the website came first, the book was published four months ago and lists the 15 point guide to live long healthy. I am Bhavan Jankaria, a radiologist and physician in practice for the last 30 odd years. The aim of Atmos First is to understand how to live long healthy and age healthfully with the resources around you as far as possible without being dependent on the healthcare system. The site is free, but to read some of the articles, you may need to subscribe with your email ID. Now, that's the uh, 15 point guide, just the points. Um, and if you see number two, then these are the points that I have explained in detail. You know, fruits and vegetables, non salted mixed nuts, avoid UPS, sugar sweetened beverages. The rest is for you. You can pause and watch, uh, go through this as well. Today's is an update on ultra processed foods or UPFs and it's titled From Parley G to Pringles Examining the Evidence. So UPFs are defined here. They're basically anything that comes in a packet and then you have, um, you know, these are factory produced using synthetics and chemicals to either give added flavor or texture or taste or, um, you know, preserve shelf life, etc. And uh, Carlos Montero is, is one of the prime movers of the entire concept. And then there's a four point Nova food classification, one being very healthy and four being extremely unhealthy. And if you go to world.openfoodfacts.org, you'll find a whole lot of um, uh, products there that you can look for and figure out which NOVA category they fit into, what is their nutritional value, uh, etc. Now, in March 2021, uh, one of the first uh, few early articles that I wrote was a potato chip a day, dot, dot, dot. And I started with these studies that said, and these were published in JAK, which is a very prestigious cardiology journal that looked at uh, mortality and cardiovascular disease risk when you ate fruits and vegetables and it showed how by adding four to five servings a day, which would then replace other things clearly, uh, if you kept the same calorie content, then you actually reduced your hazard quite significantly. Now, at that time, I also discussed ultra-processed foods or UPFs and all made a statement that we should avoid UPFs as much as possible. That is, and a good thing is not to have anything that comes in a packet. But it's been three years. I've read more, learned more. And let's look at four uh, interesting papers that have come out. None of these, remember, is a randomized controlled trial. They're either prospective or retrospective studies. They're all observational studies. And this one, for example, looked at, um, you know, a whole bunch of things uh, in terms of the different quartiles of the NOVA classification versus risk for cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, etc. If you look at it, it looks like all of them cause increased risk. But you look at the cancer risk and you find that surprisingly, if you were to eat the most uh, uh, supposed non-healthy food, your cancer risk actually goes down. And this tells you that there's noise in this study. Similar noise here, and this looked at cancer. And this was, again, from the UK Biobank, and they found that, yes, there is a mild increased risk of cancer with a hazard ratio of 1.2 is to 1. It kind of translates into, you know, if 10 people had, uh, you know, only healthy food and two people ate, uh, you know, Q4, that is the unhealthiest food, uh, you know, then two additional people might have an increased risk of cancer, uh, which is a relative risk and the absolute risk is extremely low. But look at head and neck and you find that actually, if you had unhealthy so-called food, you'd actually reduce your risk of head and neck cancer. Whereas another paper from the EPIC cohort showed that it's only in head and neck cancers that your risk increases with NOVA4. And then this food emulsifier study, which showed that some emulsifiers increase risk, so anything beyond this line here. But then you could argue that there are some that reduce risk as well. So it's a lot of noise. The authors have said, uh, because they believe UPFs are harmful, they've only looked at those results and not bothered to explain why the other results are bad. 
the studies don't match. And there's a whole lot of problems with the data. And we don't have a good randomized control trial that shows the harms of UPFs well. Reverse causation has not been accounted for. What is reverse causation? Let's accept that uh, those who eat Nova 4 foods, you know, packaged, completely synthetic, um, you know, will have harm. Um, and those who eat only fresh fruits and vegetables uh, will be healthy. But what about it? What if it's the other way around? What if, if you are of a healthy bent of mind? So let's say you're highly educated, uh, you know, live in specific surroundings, uh, in a population that reads a lot and follows all of this and eats only fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, versus if you're not well educated, you are perhaps a little poor and don't have access to fruits and vegetables and depend only on packaged foods, then you were you were unhealthy to begin with. So that reverse causation has not been accounted for. And so while the extremes are clearly harmful, and you can see that here, uh, the middle ground, we don't have enough data to tell us what is going on. So UPFs once in a while would be fine. Um, and we're, you know, also presupposing that people have the time to sit at home and chop and cook, right? So you have this rich minority world, which not only just includes the rich minority Western white world, but also includes the rich minority 2% of Indians who impose their worldview on the rest of the 98%. So it's that 2% would that perhaps would have a stay at home mom or wife or a cook or a Maharaj who can chop and cut and, you know, cook and do all of this at home. But the rest of the people do not have those luxuries. And, you know, packaged foods make it much easier. It's also often cheaper for them to be able to sustain themselves. And I wrote about this two years ago, in 2022, around about March. And you can find that by looking at Food 07. And I was looking at these studies that showed that eating avocados or olive oil or walnuts reduces mortality and cardiovascular risk. But if you were to have a diet of fruits, vegetables, nut oils, and whole grains, that would cost 215 rupees per day, if not more per person, three meals a day. A family of four would be 800 rupees. That's about 25,000 rupees a month. And if food is supposed to be just 20% of your salary, you're supposed to be earning a lakh and 25,000 odd uh, uh, to be able to afford all of this. And that's really not even 2% of India's population that can afford a healthy plant-based diet. So let's be a little realistic and understand that a lot of the stuff that comes about about eating only fruits and vegetables is a, is a worldview that comes out from having a lot of privilege. When you remember when I'm 60 now, I remember Parle Ji being a source of sustenance, right? In the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, and I've been told about the 50s and 60s, when people had nothing, they would get Parle Ji biscuits for about 5 rupees or even less, probably Charana, Atana, or whatever. And they found nourishment with this when they had nothing else. And there was no obesity at that time. No people were binging on Parle Ji. So it's not just Parle Ji and similar products that are causing obesity. There are other things that are happening as well. And our parents used to send these to us in our lunch boxes. We used to have those dunking contests. You know, how long can you hold it before it slips into the tea and you put it into your mouth, etc. What happened? How can you suddenly say that these are bad? So if you want another worldview about UPFs and all of these other issues around them, do read Laura Thomas's three parts, uh, three part thing on the truth about UPFs. You know, all the three will take you about a half hour. Um, but it, it's worth the viewpoint. And that brings us to Michael Pollan's uh, quote. And I, I thought this was a great quote. So, in fact, I mentioned it three years ago. And I've often said this to people that, you know, we shouldn't eat anything that our great grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. But I mean, let's be realistic. My great grandmother lived in a village, hand to mouth and nothing. You were dependent on farm produce. And remember that um, in those days when you had nothing and it was a joyous occasion, the way that you would show your joy was to eat something very sweet. So you had those laddus or you had montals in the, um, you know, during winter and everything was sugar and jaggery based. If my great grandfather had access to a refrigerator and packaged foods, I'm sure she would just start adopting that in the blink of an eye. You know, so 
that's pretty much what we need to remember. So what does this mean for you and I? Packaged foods are convenient. They make life easy for us. It is not easy for everyone to go and buy vegetables, meat and fish, and then prepare and chop and cook and then eat. Not all packaged food is bad. Not all non-packaged food is good. Like with everything in life, moderation is the key. So if you were to eat a packet of Lay's every day, the large packet or a box of Pringles, I mean, that's an extreme. That is going to be detrimental. But so is having a fruit, vegetable-based, plant-based diet, but then eating three and a half to 4,000 calories. I mean, if you were Michael Phelps or an extreme athlete who needs that calorie intake, that's fine. But otherwise... That doesn't make any sense. So that's the whole point. UPFs are not using UPFs as considered a part of a lifestyle or a diet. And not, none of that works. What works is a sustainable, sensible food plan without moralizing, without making you and I feel guilty about what and how much we are putting in our mouth. Something that you have to work out for yourself. I mean, nobody can. So you can go to a nutritionist or a dietitian to say, okay, I need to increase my protein intake by 10% because I'm working out and, you know, I need to build a little muscle. So then they will tell you what, uh, what uh, uh, products contain protein, but then the rest you have to do on your own. So you can't follow these ridiculous diets, low carb and ketos and, you know, fasting and eating 500 calories a day only. None of that makes any sense. You have to respect and understand your own body and self. And in the end, it's about eating well to live long healthy, not for achieving so-called acceptable body weight parameters where everybody needs to be ripped and thin and look like models, etc. So, you know, that's what this means for you and I. Why Atmosphas? So because being healthy is much more than mere absence of sickness, there is more to health than healthcare because your health is your responsibility and no one else's. And no one but you yourself can ensure that you live a long life healthy with a long health span and lifespan. That's the book. That's the 15-point guide. Everything in more detail in the book. But if you don't want to pay anything or buy the book, you could just subscribe to atmosphas.com and stay updated. You'll know each time a new piece is up. That's usually every Sunday, but it could be once in two weeks if I'm traveling, etc. Everything's free. There is the only reason the book is charged is because it costs to produce the book. Otherwise, it's all good, right? Thank you so much for listening to me.